One and two and... I've got the fever for the flavor of a Pringle. I've got the fever for the flavor of a Pringle. It's a deep fried taste. It's a crispy crunch. Did you know that Pringles aren't actually potato chips? Despite what many believe, they're legally classified as potato crisps because they contain only 42% potato content. The FDA mandated this rebrand back in 1975 to distinguish them from traditional chips. This seemingly small detail reveals just how different the Pringles manufacturing process is from what most people imagine. From dehydrated potato flakes to a precise hyperbolic paraboloid shape, the journey of creating these stackable snacks involves chemistry, engineering, and food science that most consumers never consider. Picture a 1950s America where potato chips were wildly popular but deeply flawed. Every bag presented consumers with the same frustrating issues. Broken chips at the bottom, staleness after opening, and fingers left coated with an unmistakable greasy residue. While most snack manufacturers accepted these problems as inevitable consequences of potato chip production, Procter & Gamble saw an opportunity for innovation. In 1956, chemist Frederick Bauer entered his laboratory at P&G with an ambitious assignment that would occupy the next two years of his career. His mandate wasn't to simply improve existing potato chips, but to completely reimagine them. The company had recognized a gap in the market. Consumers loved potato chips, but hated their inherent flaws. Bauer's background in both organic chemistry and food science made him uniquely qualified to tackle this multifaceted challenge. The fundamental issue lay in the traditional manufacturing approach. Conventional potato chips started with whole potatoes, sliced directly into oil. This method created immediate problems with consistency. Potatoes naturally vary in starch content, moisture, and sugar levels depending on variety, growing conditions, and storage time. These variations meant manufacturers couldn't guarantee uniform quality across batches. Furthermore, the direct frying of potato slices locked manufacturers into a process that inevitably created greasy products. Bauer recognized that incremental improvements to existing manufacturing processes wouldn't suffice. His breakthrough came when he approached the problem from an entirely different angle. What if potato chips didn't need to start as whole potatoes at all? Rather than slicing potatoes, Bauer experimented with creating a uniform dough from dehydrated potato flakes mixed with other ingredients. This approach allowed for precise control over moisture content, starch levels, and texture variables that had previously been left to nature's inconsistencies. The concept faced immediate skepticism within P&G. Marketing executives worried that consumers would reject a product that departed so radically from their expectations of what constituted a real potato chip. How could you sell a potato chip that wasn't actually sliced from a potato? There were genuine concerns that Barr's creation would be perceived as artificial or inferior, despite its technical advantages. While developing his revolutionary dough, Barr simultaneously tackled the structural challenges of traditional chips. His mathematical background led him to explore geometrical shapes that could provide maximum strength with minimal materials. The answer came in the form of a hyperbolic paraboloid, a saddle-shaped surface with unique structural properties. This shape, when applied to a thin potato crisp, distributed pressure evenly and prevented breakage during packaging and shipping. The development process was far from smooth. Early prototypes crumbled too easily or became excessively hard after cooking. Bauer and his team conducted thousands of tests, meticulously adjusting the dough formula while simultaneously fine-tuning cooking temperatures and times. The exact dimensions of the chips required careful calibration to ensure they could be stacked efficiently without nesting too tightly together. Each variable affected multiple aspects of the final product, creating a complex optimization problem. What began as a practical quest to eliminate consumer complaints evolved into something far more significant, a fundamental rethinking of what a snack food could be. Bauer wasn't merely improving a product, he was engineering an entirely new food category. The potato crisp he developed wasn't just a variation on existing chips, but a complete departure that approached snack foods as precisely engineered products rather than simple processed agricultural goods. Barr's pride in his creation extended beyond his professional life. He considered the Pringles can his most significant achievement, even requesting that some of his ashes be buried in one of the iconic containers upon his death. In 2008, his children honored this unusual request, placing a portion of his cremated remains in an original Pringles can before burial. Turning conceptual genius into mass market reality is often the greatest challenge in innovation. 
While Barr's visionary design laid the groundwork for Pringles, it was Alexander Lipa who transformed these laboratory samples into a commercial product. Lipa, an engineer at Procter & Gamble, refined the manufacturing processes and scaling techniques that would ultimately determine whether Pringles succeeded or failed in the marketplace. His engineering expertise ensured the consistent quality and efficient production necessary for Pringles to achieve commercial success. When the first commercial Pringles production line launched in 1968, it represented a manufacturing paradigm shift. Unlike traditional chip factories that processed sliced potatoes, the Pringles facility needed to handle a completely different starting material, a precisely formulated dough made from potato flakes. A critical breakthrough came with the development of specialized drum dryers, massive heated cylinders that transformed the potato mixture into thin sheets with precisely controlled moisture content. These drum dryers applied intense heat to the potato mash as it rotated, quickly evaporating moisture and forming thin, pliable sheets. This innovation provided unprecedented control over the final product's texture and structural integrity. The moisture level in these sheets would ultimately determine whether the finished Pringles achieved their distinctive crispness or ended up either too brittle or too chewy. The cutting process evolved dramatically as production scaled upward. Initial manufacturing likely relied on basic die cutters to shape the dough into ovals. However, engineers eventually developed sophisticated rotary systems capable of processing thousands of chips per minute while simultaneously recycling the excess dough back into the production stream. This advancement significantly reduced waste and improved efficiency, allowing for the high volume output needed to meet growing consumer demand. Each technical improvement brought Pringles closer to becoming a consistently reproducible product. One fascinating aspect of Pringles production is that the distinctive saddle shape isn't pressed into the chips through mechanical means. Instead, the cut ovals naturally form this hyperbolic paraboloid shape during the brief frying process. This occurs because of differential drying rates across the surface of the dough. The edges dry faster than the center, creating the curved structure. This natural forming process eliminated the need for complex molding equipment that would have further complicated the production line. Today's Pringles manufacturing represents the culmination of decades of engineering refinements. Modern factories operate with remarkable efficiency, transforming raw ingredients into packaged products in approximately 20 minutes through a continuous, highly automated process. This rapid production timeline demonstrates how far the manufacturing process has evolved from those early experimental production runs. The entire system functions as a precisely choreographed sequence with minimal human intervention required. Quality assurance remains a critical component of modern Pringles production. The factories perform over 7 million quality checks annually to ensure product consistency Specialized flavor experts conduct blind taste tests under red lighting, a technique that prevents visual bias when assessing color, texture, and seasoning distribution. These rigorous standards ensure that each Pringles chip delivers the exact experience consumers expect, regardless of when or where it was manufactured. And as our journey through the Pringles production process comes to an end, we can appreciate how this iconic snack represents a fundamental shift in food manufacturing philosophy. Pringles wasn't just designed to taste good, it was engineered as a solution to specific problems. This approach, treating food creation as an engineering challenge rather than just culinary art, has transformed the industry. The focus on consistency, precision, and controlled processes established a new paradigm that countless other manufacturers have since adopted. What began as a quest to build a better chip rippled throughout food technology making Pringles more than just a commercial success. It's a genuine milestone in how we approach food production.